on this edition of the MWHS Wildcat News. Political Roundtable concludes its school-wide mock election. Millard West and Millard South's football teams battle in a second round playoff matchup. The cheer team hosts the annual cheer clinic. We explore the booming popularity of Among Us. And the Wildcat hockey team takes on the Millard North Mustangs in their first game of the season. Today is November 6th. I'm your host, Edison Geiler. And I'm Jenna Reynolds. Good morning, Wildcats. Leading up to the presidential election on November 3rd, the Political Roundtable Club created a mock election for Millard West. Students of any age could visit a special link or scan QR codes off posters around the building to cast votes for the presidential nominee of their choosing and other officials running for state offices. Results of the mock election showed a 15-point win for former Vice President Joseph Biden and California Senator Kamala Harris, with Nebraska Senator Ben Sass and Kara Eastman also winning their polls. According to the Associated Press, Biden leads President Donald Trump 264 to 214 in the Electoral College, with votes still being counted in key battleground states like Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. We will be providing more election coverage next week once a winner has been declared. The Millard West Wildcats and Millard South Patriots squared off in the second round of the NSAA state football tournament last Friday. Despite shutting out South in the second half, West season ended with a 21-7 loss. With the looming coronavirus pandemic, West finished the year with the two wins and seven losses. Strive executive producer John Willis and staff reporter Logan Mosley recapped the season. The Millard West varsity football team wrapped up the 2020 football season this past Friday against rival Millard South in the second round of the playoffs. They lost the game 21-7 to in a strong defensive effort. Uh, I feel like my first is a little low, but by the end I feel like we fought through the whole game and gave our best shot. We had, we had chances, but lost the game. It was a tough year for the Wildcats. Seven out of the nine total games they played this year were against top 10 teams in Class A, and that includes the playoffs. They finished the regular season 1-6, won one playoff game, and then lost this past Friday, which means they finished out the year 2-7. and seven. Well, their philosophy is it's more fun to, like, playing games where the teams are actually good and you don't just destroy every team. It's a tough game every time. Uh, so we just went in knowing that we're a good team and that we have the potential to beat anyone, no matter how good they are. The story of this team has been injuries. Senior quarterback Jacob Jones was out for one game in the first five weeks and then tore his ACL against Creighton Prep and wasn't able to finish out the season. Also, senior running back Zach Coleman suffered a season-ending injury in the second quarter of the first game. There were other minor injuries with key players being out for games, including injuries to junior running back Nathan Peterson, senior defensive end Tyler Jett, and more throughout the entire team that made a big impact on the Wildcats this season. I guess we just looked on the bright side of things and just went into each game just trying our best even though we knew like a lot of our good guys were out and we still had the uh, mindset that we could basically beat anyone. Even with the tough year, there was a lot of promise from performances from different players. The most consistent player for the Wildcats was Nathan Peterson who had over a thousand all-purpose yards and 13 touchdowns on the year. Senior James Conway, senior Ryan Kukowski, and senior Colton Andrews were all forces on the defensive end, whether it was through tackling or pass coverage. Uh, obviously with Zach going down, Nate Peterson um, in some aspects was the entire offense at times, rushing for over 300 yards in one game, scoring five touchdowns in another. Uh, Nate Peterson was, was a stud as well. With all the young talent the Wildcats have, it's hard to think they won't be a state championship contender next year in the 2021 season. For the MWHS Wildcat News, this has been Logan Mosley and John Willis signing off. Young women between the ages of 4 through 14 flooded Wildcat 1 last weekend. West hosted the annual cheer clinic Saturday morning, providing aspiring cheerleaders the opportunity to learn from seasoned Wildcats. Not only do these young cheerleaders benefit from the experience, but also the cheer team is able to raise funds for their competition season. 
Entertainment editor Anna Blumenthal and staff reporter Paige Fortney report. On October 31st, the cheer team hosted their annual cheer clinic at Millard West. From 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., girls ages 4 to 14 were invited to come and learn skills and Halloween-themed routines from the cheerleaders. Participants paid $40 to attend and were encouraged to wear a Halloween costume that they could move around in. Uh, we included the Halloween kind of theme into this clinic by telling all the girls to show up in like costumes. So there's been like unicorn onesies, which is my favorite, and then I'm dressed up as a witch. With Halloween on a Saturday this year, the cheer coaches found that the clinic could line up perfectly with that day. From there, the members of the team started choreographing different Halloween-themed routines and dances to teach to the girls. Um, as far as the team goes, um, we picked out some fun Halloween songs and we decided that with Ghostbusters is going to be our main song that you're about to see. Um, and the girls, it was, it's kind of a fun event every year for the team because it's um, not a lot of pressure and they get to just put together a really fun dance for little kids to learn. And so we took some time in our practices and just prepared the dances and cheers. Participants were separated into different groups and placed on individual X's due to COVID-19 restrictions. They were taught dances, sideline cheers, and boogie chants. The cheerleaders went through a motion class with the girls and then tested their skills with the game of Simon Says. There were also different stations set up near the entrance, along with the photo booth station where they could take pictures with their group. When you get into high school and you, if you want to do high school cheer, it's good to be like with your team and to be a good teammate to be on cheer. Probably just like getting to know different people and like bonding with everybody, it's, that's probably the best part. Despite restrictions, both the team and participants were able to get into the Halloween spirit and have a fun time learning the different cheer aspects. Uh, the cheer clinic has kind of prepared me for this season by letting me be myself and kind of just having fun with it, because that's what you get to do with cheer. The cheerleaders are ready to take all the joy and excitement from the clinic and incorporate it into their routines for the season. This has been Anna Blumenthal and Paige Fortney with the MWHS Wildcat News. Among Us is not only dominating social media, but also the phones of many West students. The space-themed mystery game's meteoric rise over the past few months has found its way into many classrooms around the school. Staff reporters Annabelle Harshbarger and Maddie Christensen report on the details. Among Us is a popular online game that blew up over the past few months. The multiplayer game is based in space with 4 to 10 players in each game. When the game begins, each player is given a role either as a crewmate or an imposter. Crewmates have to complete tasks and avoid being killed by the imposter, while the imposter's goal is to kill all of the crewmates and sabotage tasks. When a dead body is found, everyone must discuss and decide who they think the imposter is and vote that person out. I think it's fun because of the murder mystery aspect to it, and it's a great way to play with your friends when you can all be together because of COVID. Crewmates win by either finishing all tasks before everyone is killed or by voting all the imposters out. Imposters win by killing all the people without getting caught. It helps, it helps you learn how your friends work and think, and instead of dealing with their lies and stuff you can kind of figure out how how they try and manipulate a situation so it's kind of fun in that sense the game has become so popular that u.s congresswoman alexandria ocasio cortez live streamed herself playing to encourage young voters to vote in the upcoming election no pokey she's so nice i can't do that <gasps> The game has exceeded over 100 million downloads and continues to gain popularity. I think it's just another um, game that you can play where you can still be socially distanced and have fun and interact with other people. So I think that's like what made it really popular. This has been Annabelle Harshberger and Maddie Christensen with the MWHS Wildcat News. The hockey team kicked off their season on October 28th with a matchup against Miller North. The Wildcats and Mustangs duked it out on the ice to start their seasons with a one in the win column, but West ended up losing three to nothing. Staff reporter Evan Vaslo brings you the coverage of the game. On Wednesday, October 28th, the Millard West hockey team kicked off their 2020 season as they traveled to Baxter Arena to face off against the Miller North Mustangs. The game took place on the Holland Ice, the secondary rink in the arena. In the first game of the season, the Wildcats fought hard, but they were a little rusty. It was our first game of the season. You know, we can improve on a lot. 
you know, we got to move the puck quicker, get more shots on the net. The Mustangs commanded possession in the first period, but failed to score until late in the period, which gave them a 1-0 lead. They carried the momentum into the second period, where they scored a second goal early in the period. The Wildcats had many opportunities to come back, but they struggled to put quality shots on goal. Not going to be uh, too good out on the ice. You know, it takes cooperation. You get out there, practice have to start like linking up. We got to start communicating out on the ice, getting the job done, putting goals in the back of the net. But usually we see that halfway into the season. Their defense did sharpen up in the second, not allowing any more goals for the rest of the period. Starting the third period down 2-0, the Wildcats fought to score but were ultimately unsuccessful. The Mustangs' superior size and skill allowed them to score another goal near the end of the third period, putting the final nail in the Wildcats' coffin. The Wildcats could not score at all, leaving the game with a 3-0 loss. The Wildcats were disappointed with their performance and the outcome of this game. However, they're optimistic that they'll be able to improve to work better as a team and have a successful season. It really all just comes down to practices, how much our players want to put time and effort into, into the season. Like, what we put into it is what we're going to get out of it. Usually going into state, we're pretty confident, but it's been pretty hard to execute it the last couple of years, and it just takes that confidence, you know. This has been Evan Vaslo for the MWHS Wildcat News. That's all for this week. Make sure to follow us on our social media, visit our website, and watch our previous broadcasts. This has been Edison Geiler and Jenner Reynolds with the MWHS Wildcat News. We'll see you next week.